everybody's Finnish speaking? Well, I'm not, but uh, yeah, I'm first one, so if you like uh, Svenska, the bra. Ah, English is fine, then. If that's more convenient for you. Okay, thank you. And this is in English, anyway. So this is about writing Wikipedia articles by the million. Which we do. Wikipedia has uh, 30 million of these articles by now. So we do write them by the million. And most of them are still handwritten. But uh, I'm going to talk about projects to write them by the million in one go, which we're not going to do by hand at a time soon. And the background here, that's just a list of some of the million of, art of articles that we made this way. Robot made butterfly articles. 178,352 total. This is the start of the alphabet, and you see it goes from Abba Blema, and it's still on Abba at the end of the <laughs> first page. <laughs> and it eventually ends up with the letter E uh, at the end. But that's many pages down. So that's what I've been doing, and a few other people have been doing for the past few years. In order to reach the goal of Wikipedia that is passed and we do by hand. Everybody here knows that quote, I think. And I wonder how many times it, it's been quoted today. I'm not the first one. No. No. But uh, there are complications in reaching that goal. Everybody can read Wikipedia and everybody can write. We tell you that all the time. And it's basically true. And we have hundreds of millions of people who do read Wikipedia. Large fraction of the world population do read. But uh, not everybody writes. And both the people who read and the people who write, they are a biased subsample of the world population. It's not everybody, and it's not a random sample. It's read by people who can afford a computer and uh, who know one of the major world languages where Wikipedia has good coverage is not read by poor people. It's not read by people who speak only Japanese or Hindi or whatever. And when it, when it comes to writing, it's worse. To make it simple, Wikipedia is written by white, affluent, male nerds. People like us. Typically young, typically single, typically with rather specialized interests. And that's reflected in the coverage of Wikipedia. <coughs> because uh, in the sum of all human knowledge, we're still just scratching the surface. And we're scratching it in the places that we enjoy. So coverage is very deep in some places and very shallow in others. Swedish Wikipedia, we have more than 100 articles about characters from Lord of the Rings, Tolkien's fictitious universe. We have less than 10 characters from the Vietnam War. And uh, I have nothing against Tolkien. I'm also more familiar with the battle against Sauron than with the Tet Offensive. But is this really a well-balanced encyclopedia? Is the Battle of Magnetir more important than the Battle of Dien Bien Phu? But nerds are more interested in it. So what do we do about that? And if we look on the reading side, giving everybody, every single person on the planet, free access to knowledge. Most of those people don't speak English. Most of them don't even speak Swedish. Some of them understand Swedish, okay? But even so, Wikipedia is written by affluent white nerds in languages that affluent white nerds know. And that makes, makes coverage very uneven between languages. To compare two languages of the same size, Japanese and French, with both 7 to 80 million speakers, Javanese has 45,000 Wikipedia articles. French has 1.4 million. 
Another thing is if you know French, you have much better access to the sum of all knowledge than if you only know Japanese. And the same question again, what do we do about that? Here is a picture of the coverage, really, illustrating. This is the location of every Wikipedia article in a geographical coordinate. The white dot on the map. And uh, presumably that's a pretty good map of the location of Wikipedia writers as well. Because I think many of us can testify that one of the first things you do on Wikipedia is to check the article about your hometown. And if there isn't one, you make one. So every hometown of a Wikipedia has a white dot here. You see the obvious pattern. The Western word, the affluent word, is white. The rest of the world is black. With a few exceptions, in South America is barely visible, and so is Africa. And uh, Russia is black. China. China is black. There is Korea. White South, North, Black North. Surprise, surprise. With some oddities, like Philippines is well covered. And Azerbaijan is well covered, and I have no idea why. You got a question? Uh, yeah, I mean, by looking at the map, I see most of Japan is white. Yeah. But then before it was uh, 45,000, the articles? Javanese, not ah. Japanese. Java is there. It's pretty well covered, but uh, not like Japan. No, but my question would be like 45,000. Ah, Javanese. Okay. Javanese. So, okay. Spoken on Java okay. in Indonesia. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. There is a 45,000 small number for this kind of uh, yeah. white. Mm -hmm. Japanese has uh, well, just below a million articles, 800,000 to 900,000 if I remember. Which pretty much covers that. Hmm? To some extent, it, it is also controlled by the population density, I guess, because yes. if you, for instance, look at uh, the US and compare with Canada, uh, it, yeah, well, that gradient is population density. Yeah. And so is Australia. Yeah. So, to, to, to some extent, uh, well, we, we should be, be fooled by the population density. No. But some things, there's not a sharp drop in population density from there to there. Yeah. So that's that's important. That's the border between Poland and Russia, so Belarus and Ukraine. So, to some extent, it's population density. Like Sweden is not totally white. I mean, that, that's population density. Yeah. But I think that's also concerning Russia and, 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 and part uh, of Africa. I mean, that you part have is dense. Yeah. That part isn't. No. That's true. And also in, in, in Africa, you have. Uh, Sahara. Sahara. Yeah. No, you don't have no, but that's that part. Yes. And there is crowded. Yes. From there down, it should be white. Yeah. And South America, except for Amazonas here, mm -hmm. exactly. the rest should be white. Mm -hmm. Same for Australia. For the desert. Yeah, that's very low population density mm -hmm. in most parts. So, to some extent, it is that. But uh, here are a billion people. In China, that's not that's not explained by population density. So some of the pattern is, and some isn't. Now, this map is not the main point. Just the point is that there are patterns. Wikipedia coverage is very uneven, and this is just geographically. Okay. The uneven coverage of topics, all kinds of topics, pops up. But a colleague who, who looked at the coverage of male versus female authors, speaking of all the authors he photographed. And a male author has a, has a much greater chance of having a Wikipedia article than a female author. For some reason. User Tanzania, who spoke this morning, uh -huh. said something about there are more, I think it's an uh, English Wikipedia, there are more articles about female porn stars than on female writers. No, yeah. it uh, was female writers <coughs> in southern part of Africa, I think. I think it was all Wikipedia. Oh, that's... I think it's Wikipedia. Okay. 
could be. But uh, there are more articles about Pokemons as well. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemons yeah. and female porn stars. Mm. And that's similar to my example about cult gamers with the Vietnam War. Mm. <laughs> so we have that, that kind of imbalances all over. Yeah. But of course, this has nothing to do with the fact <coughs> that young white male with normal hormones are writing it. So, what should we do about this? Basically, two things we should do, and that we are doing. And one is we should recruit writers by the million, outside the white male nerd community. And Wikipedia, Wikimedia is putting a lot of effort into recruiting, especially women, and also recruiting outside the Western world. And I've done my, my small part, trying to spread the gospel in the Philippines to a larger female audience. But I think the coverage of Philippines was good on that map even before. So I'm not going to take credit. But that's the kind of effort we needed. But that's tough. The people who want to write, a lot of them don't have, they don't have computers, they don't have time, they don't have the inclination, they don't have the necessary the skills. So, we do our best on that part, but that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about another way to use tools for article creation that are more efficient and that can be used to bring more balance to the article collection, where a rather small number of people can help to redress the imbalances caused by the herds and nerds. So that's what I will talk about. What can we do with other article creation tools? <coughs> Does Wikipedia, as all of us here know, I think, a lot of the work on Wikipedia is done by bots, autonomous software, and uh, especially when it comes to routine, routine tasks. Salvin, you mentioned before about uh, bots, after something has been deleted on commons, a bot will check where that picture was used and do something about it. And a lot of household tasks like that on Wikipedia don't have bots. In total, something like a quarter of all edits. But bots can also be used for non-trivial tasks, like creating new articles. That's a bit more complex and a lot more controversial. There are lots of discussions about that and ideas about that ever since Wikipedia started. And it has been tried a number of times with more or less success. But in the past few years, this activity has grown. And there are several projects running on a number of different language versions where articles are being mass created with bot software. Total so far, about 7 million articles out of the total of 30 million have been written by bots. And that's also about one quarter of the total. The bulk of those 7 million have been created by a handful of people. LSG bot that I'm running is the single largest contributor, 2.6 million. I think the single largest contributor uh, to any yeah. language version of Wikipedia with any Shall kind of article creation. <laughs> so put it this way, 8 or 9 percent of Wikipedia is my articles, <laughs> sound over languages. But it's actually not, not only the languages where I'm working that have a lot of bot articles. Dutch, Swedish, Cebuano and Warai languages they all have about a million bot-created articles each. Vietnamese has about half a million. And then there are a bunch of languages that have uh, maybe 100,000 or so. And you can note that these are not the major world languages. English, French, German, they are not mass-creating articles this way. 
English did a bit in the beginning, but that was not very popular. And it's basically not done anymore. And I'm not even th going to think about trying it in German. <laughs> And you can note that uh, these are also not, especially Cebuano and Warai, they are not languages spoken by a lot of nerds. They are spoken by a lot of people. Cebuano has 20 million people or so speaking it. Warai has several million. Even if it's tragically a bit less now, because the part of the Philippines hardest hit by the typhoon the other day was Warai speaking. Otherwise, okay, there, but I communicate on Wikipedia. So, we are broadening language coverage quite a bit. And we're also writing with the box about topics. Those seven million articles, they're about animals, plants, municipalities, lakes, and other kinds of topics like that that are not high on the list of uh, the interests for the nerds to write about Pokemon and Tolkien. So we're broadening topic coverage as well this way. In a way that would take a very, very long time to do by hand. Because uh, a language like Warai, there is less than 10 active editors. And uh, the rate on new article creation is, is less than one per day. It will, it will take a while to get to some of all human knowledge there. So, this is a shortcut. And here's an example of what the bot is making. This is one of the articles made by LSD bot on Swedish Wikipedia. With a butterfly called Absinth Malmäter in Swedish. Eupithesia absintheata in Latin. It's not any great work of literature. It's not intended to be. It has the basic facts about the, about the species. What kind of animal it is. Who discovered it. And uh, what genus and what family it belongs to. And then we have the info box at the side with all the basic stuff collected. And there are sources for all the information. And everything that should be linked is linked. So it has all the basic stuff, but nothing fancy. And that's what you get with bot creation. <coughs> so what's nice with a bot created article like that like I said, you get the basic facts, presented in a concise and consistent manner. You get it with correct wiki format. It has the info box, it has templates, it has, it has interwiki links, it has all that stuff. It has categories. And it has sources. And uh, if you browse new articles on Wikipedia, especially those write, written by beginners, how many of them have all that? And how many handwritten articles have no typos? And whether it is a problem. And uh, people who followed the bot project on Swedish Wikipedia, you know that there, there were problems reported over now and then. Sometimes minor ones, like uh, the discovery of all a bunch of insects was misspelled. <laughs> the source. <laughs> How many articles? Thousand or, so. Thousand or so. And the last year one, uh, the source database I was using, they changed their website at some point. So that all the source links became dead links. And that was about a million links to fix. <laughs> and you have another bot for that idea? No. How about the bot? The errors I mean, fixing manual typos 
that has to be done by hand, proofreading by hand, which puts you asleep very quickly. Fixing that kind of mistakes in bumped articles, they are systematic errors. There are not that many, and, and when they occur, they will be the same across a large range of articles. And that means they can be fixed by bulk. <clears throat> but there are bad sites also with about articles. They're boring. Just two sentences of text or three. There's nothing fancy. It's nothing that would really... You would not lie awake at night reading these articles over and over and over. And they're very standardized. If you click on random article on Swedish Wikipedia, that's a discussion that we had a few times at the village pump. People complain that random article is so boring nowadays. Because you get these little beetles and worms and stuff all the time, and they all look the same. And, well, it's true. I don't see the main purpose of Wikipedia is not entertainment. The main purpose of Wikipedia is to be able to find the information when you need it. I mean, inspiring entertainment, that's nice, but that's a bonus. And if we don't quite have it anymore, well, too bad. But it's worth it. Worse is that the bot creation is limited. It can only handle what I would call standardizable facts. Facts that have a very similar format for a large number of entities. And uh, it can't do anything more complex. It can't handle, for example, all these articles about butterflies. It would be great if there could be a short description of what a butterfly looks like. And it doesn't work. Even if the source database contained the information, it can't be put in that a standardized enough format. And it's probably in the wrong language anyway. When I was bot creating articles about birds, I tried dabbling with machine translation. Never again. Machine translation alone generated more problems and more work and more complaints and all the rest of the project together. So forget about that. Only standardizable facts. <coughs> and it follows the source blindly, like that misspelling uh, I told you about before. And also typos in the source that are obvious to a human will be copied by a bot. So that way we get occasional typos. But there are different Typical, typically, they have typos like, a, like an author name that will reoccur many times, but there will not be that many. And it's not good when there are oddities of various kinds, anomalies, exceptions, when there's something weird going on. The bot can just blindly follow the stuff right into nowhere. So, uh, weird source data that a human, that will make a human pause and say, hey, what's going on? The bot will just run. <laughs> so you better have a clean database. But generally, in my opinion, the good far outweighs the bad. These articles are worth having. They are a lot better than a red link. Some people disagree. There are many discussions about this on Swedish Wikipedia. But this is what we have. And uh, by working hard with the bot code, you can improve a bit. But there are some fundamental limitations. You're never going to have these long, fancy texts that are variable from article to article. That's not going to happen with a bot. And it's limited to certain kinds of topics also. You need a topic where you have a large number of entities that are 
similar enough so that you can have standard text templates where you can just put in the information for each one. Lots of entities, each one of them notable enough for a Wikipedia article. And uh, the basic facts about each one should be as language independent as possible. It should be numbers, or it should be scientific names, like with the animals. Or it should be something like that that's not dependent on a specific language. Because then, then you become very limited again, especially when you want to spread it to non-Western languages. Because source databases, they will be available usually in English, maybe in other major languages, but they're never going to be available in Morai. So, this limits us, and uh, this is also an argument against the complaints that you also hear sometimes. People wonder, bots are creating millions and millions of articles, why, do, why should I continue creating articles? I will just be run over by the bots. No fun anymore. But there are still millions and millions of potential article topics that are impossible to tackle with a bot. All conceptual articles. All articles about more complex topics that are not standardizable. All articles about topics that you can't find in databases. All those will always have to go into my hand. The articles that should be a bit longer than two or three sentences. Articles about large topics, they still have to be written by hand. So there will be no shortage of work for manual editors <coughs> anytime soon. What we can do with bots, that's this kind of stuff. Animals and plants, we're doing already. Geographical objects, also we're doing that already. Administrative entities, the same. But there are, there are lots and lots of them not covered yet. Astronomical objects. Do we want an article about every galaxy known to man? We could have one. Chemical elements, chemical compounds, of which there are a few million. We could have them. Genes and proteins. All those. All this stuff exists in large databases. So far it's all science stuff, sort of, and geography. But one idea we thought about when we had a workshop, was it last week? No, I think it was a week ago. I was talking with Iger and Lasko and a few other from Swedish Wikipedia about possible bot creation topics. And uh, one thing I came up with was we can actually use this to make articles about authors and books. How are those articles look? Well, very basic. An article about an author would be uh, would basically say that uh, John Smith is a, is an author born in uh, 1922, dead in 1987. He has written the following books, tick, 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 period. That would be a stuff, it's enough to start with. And basically, we do it by reading off the date, the catalog of the Royal Library, or the Lib Library of Congress, or whatever you want. Big libraries, their catalogs are typically online. And from those, you can uh, extract basic data about both authors of books. And also check if the author and the book are notable enough. Swedish, Swedish Wikipedia, we have the notability criterion that an author should have written two books that are well, not self-published, published in the proper publisher. And similarly, a book is relevant. Let's see, what are the criteria? Should be available in many public libraries, not just the we call it the duty copies come to the Royal Library. And uh, that's the kind of facts that you can find in the library database. Whether the book or author 
or feels he's coherent. So that could be done. Creating a stub about every relevant Swedish author. How many percent of the articles on Swedish Wikipedia <coughs> are bot created today? About two thirds. We have uh, about 1.4 million total, of 400,000 something handmade and about a million bot made. So I think if all these projects, if all these articles were created, uh, Wikipedia would, would be a very different, would be very different from today. Yeah. It would be like the Seguan and Walai Wikipedia are today. But they are like 90% bot made. In plain number of articles. In the number of bytes, of body text, the distribution will be different. Yeah. I'm sure the, ma the majority of the body text of Swedish Wikipedia is still handwritten. Because the bot articles don't pre contribute very much there. Total number of bytes, I'm not sure. The bot articles are short, but since they have all the info boxes and stuff, the number of bytes is not that small. It's about 2,000 on average. And we have a lot of handwritten articles that are shorter. Yeah, and it is also a, a, a smaller part of, of what you perceive when you just go to the Wikipedia main page mm -hmm. and uh, click around among articles. You, 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 you will uh, perceive many more, much more of the big uh, subjects that are not. Uh, both created uh, articles, uh, but, but that, that is okay if, if the if the both created articles uh, are, are that to broaden the uh, yeah yeah, yeah on, on the main page we put the the nice articles that we want to show off and they're typically not bot made mm. and the articles about heavy topics which people are creating by hand long ago and. The bot has made a million articles about animals, but we had a few thousand articles, 10 or 20 thousand I think about animals before, mm -hmm. which is just one or two percent of all animals, but all the articles about the big, spectacular, popular animals, they were written before, so they're not bot made. Mm -hmm. We had already articles about lions and tigers and elephants and one of the best covered groups was dinosaurs. <laughs> Speaking of young young male nerds. <laughs> Whereas what the bot has contributed is coverage of worms, insects, and the uh, other non-spectacular animals. How do you work with images? Images? Is it that's uh, Obviously, the bot is not going to go out photography. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what the bot is doing with images, you saw there was an image in that butterfly article, yeah. is that uh, the bot will check, it checks for interwiki anyway. It checks if the same article exists in other languages. And uh, if, if there is an article on another major language with a taxi box, with an image, the bot will pick that image. And uh, then, after the bot article has a full set of interwiki, I will make the article with a handful of interwiki links, look through the 10 or so largest languages, and find something. Then I will leave the article for a week or so, let interwiki bots do, do their thing. And after that, that's, by the way, maybe a useful program more generally. I have a bot that will look at an article, follow all the interwiki links, check if the other language ver versions have images, and import them. I use it for the bot articles, but it could be used for any article. So that uh, you could go through all the Romanian authors on some language version, and let the bot import those images that you took 
into the other language version, creating a picture gallery at the bottom of the article, not doing anything fancy. So that's all about comments and images. Oh, and it will also work in the comments. If there's a comments category with the right scientific name, it will look there. Sorry, is it Latin? Latin name, yes. And comments categories for animal species, they are typically named for a Latin name. How many percent of the, the bot created articles have photos? I haven't checked actually. But the, in total, it's small. All those little worms don't have images typically. But in some groups, like birds, it's a fair, fair percentage. And, and this is also uh, interesting from a uh, photo photographing uh, perspective. Uh, uh, and uh, if uh, if you wonder uh, whether you, you should upload uh, photos to uh, comments, uh, even if there is no article about the topic, because uh, that, that could be in the future. Yeah, especially if you take a take an image of a, something that can be bot made. Yeah. And that can be a spider or something. And it can also be a town somewhere. Mm. I, mean, I expect that all the cities and towns of the world will have Wikipedia articles in the foreseeable future. So now, whenever you pass through a town, take a photo. Mm. And make sure it has a comments category that's recognizable for a bot. Because that's important. Mm. They want a reasonable way to look with a bot in comments is to go through the categories. And uh, towns don't have, have uh, scientific names, so, so it, it makes it a bit more difficult yes. to uh, sort out uh, which town uh, has, has the, the name in, in the comments. Yeah. And uh, in which language should you yeah. name it in comments? Mm -hmm. Should you use the local name or the name in English? Mm -hmm. And which alphabet? So, uh, I had a bit of a pain with that when I was doing birds, because my software didn't handle non-Latin alphabets. I'm using totally different software now, I learned a few lessons, so that was one of the lessons. Because there were, there were a bunch of bird photos in commons, apparently taken by Russians, and uploaded with Russian file names works fine on commons. So that's a non-trivial issue. But I think probably the best idea is to to name the towns on, on commons after the local name of the town. Whatever it says on the road sign when you when you drive into town. Because that that's the name I mean any other variety will be arbitrary. Then what we name the article on the different language versions of Wikipedia, that's a different issue, which is also complicated. <laughs> so there are complications with things like geographical objects. And especially when the local name is contentious. I don't know, I haven't checked what Commons is doing about Macedonia. I'm not sure I want to know. Okay. Anyway, that was a bunch of the uh, potential bot topics. I'm not sure it's possible to think about a few more. There's quite enough to keep us busy with the bots for a while. I think there are more potential articles here than even the bots can handle for several years. So maybe an animal species that took a year with a bot. Even bots are not infinitely fast. And it took months of software development, which is also a bottleneck. So what you need to run a bot, you need a source database where you can get your facts. Database that's machine readable, either online or downloadable, both works. And it has to be accessible, legally accessible, in a way that's compatible with bot creation. 
So these kind of research scientific databases, they typically are. They're not heavily copyrighted. And uh, just picking facts out of a database and make, putting them into your, your own text, that's not a copy bio as I see it. But the need standardized facts, like I said, language independent, or in the target language already, but that limits your choice a lot. That's not what you want. Software, not really anything fancy needed. That's not a limit limitation. Writing a software takes a while. But uh, you can use whatever programming language you like. The various bot projects on Swedish Wikipedia, there are not two bot projects doing it the same way. Some of us use Excel, some of us use Pythia, some of us use C Sharp, and so on. What is LSC bot? LSC bot? Nowadays using C Sharp and .NET Wikibot. When I did birds, I used uh, Excel. That's another thing I learned from the, from the birds. Excel is not enough. <laughs> Even with the birds that are just 10,000 or so, creating article text for 10,000 birds in Excel with all the various complications, that will make Excel crash. And Excel doesn't fail gracefully when you overload it. I lost data a few times. That's really Do you uh, insert data to wiki data to, or is that? That's uh, in the fu future plans, but not now. When I was developing the bot code, Wikidata wasn't, hadn't opened yet, and it's still not quite stable. So I'm not in a great hurry with that, but it should be done, yes. And you need also somebody who speaks the target language, because even those few sentences of text, you need somebody to translate those few sentences. And you also need somebody to translate the the vocabulary of the chosen topic. I mean, I needed a speaker of Cebuano who knew biological vocabulary in Cebuano. So, uh, otherwise I can run the bot in a language I don't know, as long as somebody has helped me with that part. I'm discussing currently with the Persian Wikipedia where I will need quite a bit of help because uh, in Cebuano I can at least read the alphabet and I know a bit. Persian I can't read the alphabet. So I have no way of checking if the bot is doing what it should myself. So that will be a challenge. And you need consensus because especially on some Wikipedias this is controversial it was easy enough to get consensus on where I, with a handful of active users, and only one administrator. He was pretty much making the, his own decisions. But uh, on Swedish Wikipedia, we know there have been long, long discussions before, before we reach consensus. And it still flares up every now and then. There is a vocal minority who don't like it. But we have close enough to a consensus. And then, coming back to the language coverage, because this is an important for me. I'm not just running this for Swedish Wikipedia. I want broad coverage, because this is fairly easy with a bot. If you do it the right way, if you consider from the start that it should be language Portable. And that means writing the bot code so that those text templates, the vocabulary and sentence fragments you need from the target language, you should not have them spread out through the code. Keep them separate in a text file. And then you just replace that text file between languages. Or as I do it, I have a I have a small Excel file with uh, a column for each language. And when I start a bot run, I type in which language should it run this time. And then it will pick from the right column. So 
some kind of solution like that, where the language part kept separately from the botcode itself. That makes it quite easy. And uh, adding a new language is just adding a new column in a table. But then we also need the Wikipedia templates. Like the MNR articles, they all have this template taxabox that's doing a lot of work. And taxaboxes exist in a lot of languages, but they're not identical in all languages. Swedish and English and German Wikipedia have incompatible taxaboxes. You can take a taxabox from English Wikipedia to Swedish Wikipedia, just copy the wiki code and it will work sort of. Between Swedish and German? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's easier actually to uh, run the bot project on a uh, Wikipedia that doesn't have the templates yet, then you just pick them from Swedish. <laughs> That's what I'm doing in Cebuano, but I. And I check Persian has a compatible one. So there are complications, but uh, manageable typically. And here we have that butterfly again, but in what I want in language this time. And you see it's it looks the same, except that the text is now Aneopithecia Atentiata in Uska species under Pyroptera in Hulagoi, Michael Alexander Clark at on seventy fifty nine, and so on. So same few sentences, but in a different language. And they're going to look kind of the same. So this is quite portable. It's straightforward to bring between languages. For somebody who knows the language and knows biological vocabulary, it's yeah, a day or two of work to translate what's needed. But you should also translate names of animal groups, like what's a butterfly in Persian, or what I. So uh, it's a bit more than just the sentence fragments. It's a few hundred animal names and a bunch of biological words and so on. But that's okay. One question, how do you then find the articles as a reader? I mean, you don't know the Latin names probably. Do you know the normal Swedish name of the specific uh, butterfly? Yeah. Uh, and uh, do, do does the bot create a link there, or is it just the uh, scientific name? Oh, if you remember the Swedish one, let's see if we have this. Yes. Link to Swedish name. Okay. So uh, for Swedish, we have a database in Swedish available. Mm -hmm. In Taxa, reference number three. Okay. And the bot reads that specifically to pick Swedish names. Okay. In uh, Cebuana Warai, that's not available. So there, somebody will either have to go by scientific names or use categories. Warai Wikipedia, they reached a consensus to run with scientific names only. On Cebuano, we have a category tree. We have a double category tree, just like Swedish. In uh, in Cebuano and in Latin. So there you can reach. You go into category Mananap to find animals, and then you continue into category, what's it called? The uh, Insta to get species, and so on. With the native words. But do all butterflies have names? No. In the vast majority don't. The ones. I think there are maybe 10 or 20,000 of a million animals who have a Swedish name. All the ones that occur in Sweden and a few others. But the vast majority don't. They have only the scientific name. Yeah. So, did that answer your question? Stuff that doesn't have a Swedish or local name, then well, you're stuck with a scientific name. 
I think there's a list of the bus projects I'm familiar with, which are 8,000 Bergs. That was the first project I did. That's the first major one that's by Tango on Swedish Wikipedia. Do you have to reach consensus on all these projects, or is it like, yes, it's okay to make bot created articles, and then you just go, or do you say, now I want, is it okay if I do a one with chemical elements, and now I want to do one with the lakes of Sweden? Well, uh, I initiate the discussion to reach consensus for the birds, and then again for all the species of animals, because that's a much more massive one. But I don't remember any discussion like that for the municipalities of France, or for that matter, municipalities of the Philippines. The municipalities of France, as far as I've noticed, the NASCO just ran it. <laughs> so if you find a database and you, you can just program and go? Depends. NASCO got away with it. I don't think I would have got away with it with a million animals without consensus. How fast uh, does it work? Well, the bot is running smoothly. I'll call it 10,000 articles a day. Is it the limitation of the bot, or is it the rules of Wikipedia? The rules of Wikipedia. Yeah. That the, a bot should not do more than 5 to 10 edits per minute. A 5 to 10 edits per minute, that's 10,000 a day, about, more or less. Depends a bit. I mean, the bot is creating a lot more than just the articles themselves. It's creating the category trees, it's creating stub templates, it's creating redirects from alternative names. And all of those use up edits. You thought of everything. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought of a bunch of things. I mean, I created a million new articles. I probably created 100,000 new categories also. So there have been... Uh, Maybe three, maybe three or four of these have, have had extensive discussion. What well, is NASCO bot? This is some other user? Yeah, user NASCO. Yeah. Is he doing the same thing? Or is He's it? using a totally different method. He's still running with Excel and AWB. With uh, everything in France and also all the lakes of Sweden, which is a quite elegant articles. He manages to get a lot of information from the Swedish authorities about lakes. And uh, I've been running quite a bit on Cebuano. Oops, that's wrong. That should be Swedish. In the Spelters of Philippines, I've, I've not made a Swedish Wikipedia. And uh, Innocent Bot, that's uh, Lavallen behind it. He's made uh, tens of thousands of uh, American counties. I think he's made some other stuff also. And various people have been running on Dutch and Vietnamese and a few other languages, but mostly making animals. But was the compass discussed so much? I don't no. remember. No. But what do you think about writing about authors or books? Is that the, the debate? Yeah, I mean, there has been a debate. Yes, exactly. It has been mentioned on the village pub. Yes. And uh, no consensus yet that I can see. But I'm not in a hurry. Not even finished with all the plans yet. So uh, I prefer to have a discussion. I think that's only fair with the other users. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're doubling the size of the Wikipedia, you shouldn't do that without discussion. I mean, a thousand Philippine towns. Okay, I didn't bother discussing discussing that. Are they geotagged as well? Mm. Those are made with a different method because I copied the info box from the Tagalog Wikipedia, which had complete coverage already. And they had. No, but we'll see in a moment. This will show you up one of the articles. Because the question I get sometimes is, what's the point in creating a million articles about very obscure topics that nobody would ever care about? And if the point is that you never know when an obscure topic some, suddenly becomes something that people care about. Like you all heard the news about the typhoon in the Philippines. And uh, 
from the uh, Svenska Dagbladet today. 300 people died in the town of Basay. Anybody ever heard of Basay? And when the news mentions something you never heard of, you look it up, you Google it. Google will point you to Wikipedia. And because of what LSJ Bond did last summer, Swedish Wikipedia has an article about Basay. And that is entirely about creative. That is entirely about creative, including the images. I think that could could be a like a man-made article, actually. No. I haven't checked the history, but this looks just like a made it near enough. The coordinates. No. I didn't remember if I could coordinate them then from Tagalog. And there is a map showing where it is, and uh, the picture of what it used to look like. In the original version, it was, it was co coordinate in the original version. Yeah. Okay. Are you checked now? Yes. Yeah. Has anything been done with it? Yes. The uh, LSE bot has made four edits in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then uh, Wolfgang was bought and made some changes. Direction. And then NASCO made uh, the headline sources plus uh, some other. Right, stuff. I think he fixed sources in all of them ones. Yeah, and then um, Merv bot, Emos bot, Merv bot, Ad bot, Rex bot, and Emerson <laughs> bot have been uh, <laughs> <laughs> doing something with it. They, they, they do it with the other way. yes. And it has also you know, been uh, attempted for orphaned articles. Ah, because nobody bothered to link to my save before. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you have uh, uh, experienced something like uh, ed an edit war between bots. Robot war. Yeah. 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 Not really. The I was tempted to start it once, <laughs> when uh, one of those, uh, I think, ad bots was adding wrong in the linking to my articles in Cebuano. Because, yeah, because there's some funny business on English Wikipedia. English Wikipedia's had redirects connecting species that I had separate articles about. And that screwed up the Interwiki and made the uh, ad bot do the wrong thing. But you mentioned there were the first four edits was, were made by the same bot. Yes, it was LSE bot. No. Made some. And not the same bot, but I but I think it. No. But uh, what kind of edits does, does it just create a complete article and then move on, or does it, is, was it no. correcting itself, or why? Like I said, why before, uh, the pictures I added afterwards. And uh, also, uh, if I find some small issue, maybe changing the text or something, I can run over all the articles again and fix that. So uh, that's quite typical. I can do a couple of passes through the articles for the bot. But uh, the first edit, I mean, you can look at the first. Well, the first, then you created the article. Yeah. Uh, with the next day, you made some replacement of the text. The minus category, two plus articular spoon, Chedla Wikipedia, type looking for, and the uh, reference there. And then, on two days later, you uh, fixed the um, pictures or images. And then, uh, two days later, you cha changed the div to template article. Room. And then both and the spot came and made some corrections here. Yeah. Okay. So, so that was what MSC bot did in the beginning. You see, the, the bulk of the article was created in that first edit, mm -hmm. and then various fixes afterwards. Which is rather typical because uh, it was a small bus project, a thousand towns. That's about a couple of hours work for the bot. So I ran it through and then I checked and 
found some minor issues, went through again. So, typically if you look at a bound article, it will have been bump edited a few times. So, it would be interesting to see the statistics of this article tomorrow. Yeah. See if anyone has read it today, because now in the statistics it says it's read 19 times in the last 30 days. So it's one to two uh, viewing of, the, in, of this article. And maybe tomorrow a lot of people have been uh, right. reading it. Check the statistics of Tacroba, because that was in the news yesterday that Tacroba City was hit. That's what comes from being in the news yesterday. <laughs> and I think it will be the same in the other article tomorrow. In yeah, statistics. but it hasn't done yet. No. So you see, people do go to Wikipedia when something is in the news. Ago, someone said if you press random article three times, you will end up in a robot article. And I tried it, and every time I tried, it was the third one. <laughs> every time I tried. But I think it's more than Yeah, now I should get the. Uh, it's about two thirds of the articles now. sum up here at the end, and we're out of time anyway. <laughs> so, bots, they make boring articles and obscure topics, and they can only make some types of articles where you have this kind of standardized type, and it's still controversial. And you get, you don't get typos, but you can get other kinds of errors. But the upside is that this is a very efficient way of getting complete coverage within the areas which works. We're never going to have every bump as like in any other way. And that's pretty neat to have. And you get articles that are accurate enough. You get articles that all have sources, which something like half of the human written articles don't have sources. And we're extending Wikipedia outside nerd interests. And we're extending it outside nerd spoken languages. And that, I think, is really the important part of the bot creation. We are, this way, we are getting much closer to providing a sum of all knowledge, or really to all persons. We're not going to get there manually. But bots can be a big 